Good morning, Algebra 2. Uh, we are going to be starting a new topic today. It's from Section 5.5 of your book, and it is on rational numbers as exponents. Now, it's highly likely that you've not had any of this before, so as we're going through the notes, if I hit anything that you get confused about, please pause, back up, play it again, or if you fall behind on the note taking, feel free to pause the video so that you can keep up. Uh, these notes go with a couple worksheets, but this is the first one. 5.5 rational numbers as exponents. It's a practice with precision, and it's homework number 38, which is due on the 21st. So we're going to go and spend a, a little bit more time than usual on this because it is such a new topic. So the first question you might ask yourself is, why would, would we want to change radicals to exponents. I mean, why can't we just leave it in radical form? Okay, well, one of the reasons that we're going to change things to exponential form is so that we can simplify things that radical form simply won't do. An example of this is the cube root of 2 times the square root of 2. The first one is a root 3 radical, and as you can see, the second one is a root 2. They are not the same. So using radical form, this is not a possible problem to be simplified. So this is where the new form we're going to be learning comes in. Uh, you switch it up to exponent form which has its own properties. And there's a lot more exponent properties than there are radical properties. And if you remember from way back when, when you multiply two exponents, if they have the same base, such as x to the power of m times x to the power of n, exponent properties say we can keep the base and add the exponents, m plus n. Exponent form lets us do that. So what we're going to do, let me just draw a little line here, is we're going to switch these to fractional exponents. So the way you do this, and we'll get into this a little bit more later, is uh, you take the power of the 2, which is a 1. That becomes the top of the fractional exponent. And then the root becomes the bottom. So that's 2 to the power of 1 third. Uh, this is also 2 to the power of 1. So 1 goes on the top. But this is a square root because there's no number there. So the default is a 2. Now we can use our properties for exponent forms. We're going to keep the base and add the exponents. So base 2 to the power of 1 third plus 1 half. Of course, you need a common denominator, so you change this to 2 sixths plus 3 sixths, which is 5 sixths. So now that we've simplified them, we need to convert back at the end. The top number of the fraction is the power on the 2. So this is 2 to the power of 5. And the bottom number in the fraction is the root, or the index, of the radical, which is a 6. Now, normally you'd multiply that back out, but I'm just, just trying to demonstrate how what we're learning works in with what we already know. If you start with a radical and you convert it to exponent form to simplify, you must convert back to the original form at the end. That, that has to happen. All right, so let's get into this topic. Roman numeral 1, we have a theorem, 7-6 which says if you have a radical with a root k and a radicand of a to the power of m, what this theorem lets you do is pull the power off of the a. So the a is still inside a radical with a root k, but its power goes to the outside. Now, a nice thing about this one is it's a biconditional. We can take the power back in, or we can take it to the outside. It goes both ways. Um, a couple 
things you need to know about this is first thing when you move the proper the power into the radicand um, it has to be the power of the whole radicand so m is the power of the whole radicand now in this case our radicand was a so that was pretty easy but if there's more than one term in there the whole thing gets raised to the power of m um, again you're going to raise it to a single power so all of it goes once um, let's see so this starts to look differently depending on what you're doing. Um, here's an example of just basic simplifying. So we're going to start with, we are going to do the, the theorem. And we're going to simplify two ways. That's what we're going to learn. Simplify two ways. Okay, the first method, this is an old method, is how we've always done it. Inside to out, a radical is indeed a grouping symbol. So if I have the cube root of 64, I can prime factor the 64. It is 8 times 8. So 2, 2, 2 for the first 8, 2, 2, 2 for the second 8. Now our old way of doing this is for every three of one of a factor, one comes out. So I have three twos, one comes out. I have another three twos, one comes out. There's nothing left in the radicand. So this simplifies to a four. Okay, method B. This is the new method we're learning. We're going to use theorem seven, six, and we're going to simplify by moving the exponent outside the radical. We should get the same answer. So again, we're going to do the cube root of 64. Now here's where we're going to use the new method. 64 is 8 squared, so rewrite it so that it is a power. And then using the theorem, I can move the 2 to the outside. So now I have the cube root of 8 quantity squared. So because it's now squared, I have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 8, because there's two of them. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So I get that for the first one, and the same thing. Cube root of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Now we simplify. 3 twos, 1 comes out. 3 twos, 1 comes out. And we get 4. So one advantage of doing the split is you only have to worry about 3 twos instead of 6. Sometimes it can save you a lot of work. Um, there's a couple pitfalls I want to point out. Uh, one of them is this one. If you take the cube root of 3 squared x, uh, this 2 is only attached to the 3. Um, it has to be the radicand raised to a single power. So because this is raised to the power of 2 and the x is not, um, we cannot use 7.6 for that. It has to be the entire radicand. Now, on the other hand, if you had the cube root of, let's say, 3 and x were both squared, now we can use our property and move the 2 to the outside, the cube root of 3x, and then do quantity squared. So that would be a yes. So the interior has to be to the same power. It cannot have only part of it to the same power. All right, so that is theorem 7, 6. We're going to go on to Roman numeral 2. And we're going to get into the details of how you write the radical as a 
ra as a rational exponent. So Roman numeral two, we're going to write the index, which is also the root of the radical, as an exponent. All right, part A, basic notation. And I'm going to use a couple different colors here so that you can tell which piece is going which direction. So we're going to start with something really simple, like the square root of A. Okay, the power on A is an invisible 1. The index on the radical is an invisible 2. To turn this into exponential form, you keep A as the base. The power of A, which is 1, goes on top of the fraction. And the root of the radical goes on the bottom of the fraction. So this is a to the power of 1 half. All right, let's go one step more complicated. This time, it's going to be a, but it's going to be the power of 2. And the root or index is going to be a 3. So again, keep the base. The power of the radicand goes on top of the fraction. The root or index of the radical goes on the bottom. So we end up with a to the 2 thirds. OK, let's do another one. This is going to be square root a. The index is a 4, and this is going to be a squared. So converting this to exponent form, we keep a base a. The power on the a goes on the top of the fraction. The root of the radical goes on the bottom. Now, this fraction is subject to the same simplifying rules as all other fractions. So 2 and 4 both have a 2 in common, so you'd want to simplify that to 1 half. So you can do adding, adding exponent to exponent if they're fractional or reducing them just like you would for fractions. All right, last one of these. This is just going to be a plain square root, and you have a 2ab on the inside. So what you want to do is realize that because each of these is to the power of 1, I can say that the whole thing is to the power of 1. Also, there is an invisible 2 as the index. So I'm going to need to put the 2ab in parentheses because that whole thing is the radicand. It is raised to the power of 1, so 1 goes on the top. It is under a square root, so a 2 goes on the bottom. So if you have more than one term on your radicand, uh, just put them in parentheses. Okay, part b. We're going to do some practice. And I'm going to give you a chance to practice this. We're going to change two exponents. And I'm going to write out all three problems. And then if you need to, pause the video and work it out. So number one is the cube root of 5. Number two is the cube root of 7 squared. And number 3 is 2 times the fourth root of 10. And I want you to convert all three of these to exponent form. Again, you might want to pause the recording, use a pencil, and then start it back up to check your answers. All right, so for number 1, the power on the 5 is an invisible 1. So we'll keep the base 5. The top of the fraction will be 1. The bottom of the fraction is the index, which is 3. So 5 to the power of 1 third. Number 2, keep the base 7. The power on the 7 is 2. That goes on top of the fraction. The root of the radical is 3. That goes on the bottom. So 7 to the power of 2 thirds. Now this last one, you have a scalar 2. So what you're going to want to do is separate that 2 from the radical with a multiplication symbol, which is implied because it's against the radical. And then 10 is to the power of 1, and it's a root 4. 
Now, one of the questions that I oftentimes get is, can I multiply the 2 by the 10? The answer is no, because remember, if the 10 is trapped under the radical, it's not actually 10. It's some other decimal. So you're not really multiplying 2 times 10 at all. So these have to stay separate, even though it is very tempting to want to combine those. Okay, part C, we're going to go backwards now. We are going to change to radical form. Change to radical form. All right, example one. We've got a to the power of m over n. So you deconstruct this. It's the exact reverse operation from what we've just been practicing. So the a is inside the radical bars. The top number is m, so it's to the power of m. The bottom number is n, so it's an nth root. Okay, number two. 9 to the power of 2 thirds. And when they tell you to convert to radical form, it's implied that you will simplify it if possible once you get there. All right, so let's start by just getting it into a radical. So I have 9 as the base of the power, 2 is the exponent, and the root is 3. Now here's where we need to take an extra simplifying step. 9 is 3 times 3, so since it's squared, I get 3 times 3 for the first 9, 3 times 3 for the second 9. So this is a cube root. There are three threes, so one is going to come out to the front, and I have a single three left, so cube root of a single three. Again, you're expected to simplify, if possible, when converting between forms. All right, number three. This one always throws people. I've got 32 to the power of negative two-fifths. Um, notice this is a negative exponent. Uh, if you have a negative exponent, 7.6 theorem won't work. So negative exponent means no 7.6. So we basically have to get rid of the negative exponent and then we can actually use our theorem. So a negative exponent means reciprocal. So this is really 1 over 32 to the positive 2 fifths. And once you move it, of course, you don't. It, it's no longer negative. Now, if you're asked if this is rational or irrational, the answer is irrational because it has a fifth root. It's like having a radical in the bottom. So this form right now is irrational, and you might have to rationalize it depending on the problem that you're doing. But let's just go ahead and convert it. So 1 over, I've got 32. The top number is a 2 under the radical with an index of 5. So let's go ahead and simplify. I need to prime factor. A really wrong, long fifth root radical here. Let's see, 32 is 8 times 4. So 2, 2, 2 for the 8, 2, 2 for the 4. That's my first 32. Now I have another one. 2, 2, 2 for the 8, 2, 2 for the 4. So 32 and 32. This is a fifth root. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For every 5, 1 comes out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another 5. Another one comes out. So this actually rationalizes itself. It ends up being 1 over 4. So again, if you're going to rationalize, convert to radical form, which is what we did here. After you've converted to radical form and you've rationalized it, this one rationalized itself. There's no really exponents left here to worry about, but if you rationalize it in radical form, uh, then you have to go back 
to exponent form because that's the form that you started with. So we use each form for certain math operations, but then at the end we switch back to whatever were the terms of the original equation. All right, so here we are on the last section. This is at one, two, and three. So now we're going to go to number four. And this will look like the one that we started out with. We've got the fourth root of three times the square root of three. And again, we can't do anything with it as a radical because the root four is not the same as a root two. So we're gonna put this into exponent form. Um, both threes have a power of invisible one. So this is three to the one fourth times three to the one half. Now that we are in exponent form, we actually can use our exponent properties uh, x to the power of m times x to the power of n. If they share the same base, keep the base and add the exponents. x to the m plus n. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to keep the 3. We're going to go 1 fourth plus 1 half. Now, of course, you need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the 1 half by 2 over 2, just like what you would do normally when adding fractions. So this is 2 fourths. Now that they have a common denominator, we can add it. 1 fourth plus 2 fourths is 3 fourths. We are simplified, but we need to go back into the original form. So uh, this is 3 to the power of 3 underneath a fourth root. And 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So you multiply it it back out. So the fourth root of 27 is your answer. So this situation is going to come up lots of times on your homework. And so your strategy is if the roots are not equal, change the roots in exponential form or exponent form. And then go back to radicals. Most likely, you will have a new index. Sometimes you won't, but typically you will. All right, number five and the last one today. Number five, we're going to do the cube root of five over the fourth root of 25. Now you know this needs to be rationalized because it has a radical in the bottom, but we can't use our normal rationalizing move of multiplying by what we need because that's a cube root and that's a fourth root and you can't multiply radicals with different roots. So we're going to switch both of these to exponent form. Uh, this is 5 to the power of 1. So I've got on the top 5 to the power of 1 third over and then I've got 25 on the bottom to the power of 1 fourth. Now you might look at that and go hey I can't do anything with that because that's a base 5 and that's a base 25. However you know that 25 is equal to 5 squared so we're going to change that to a base 5 so our 5's match. Then we can do some math with this. So I'm going to replace the 25 with a 5 squared, and that's raised to the power of 1 fourth. Power to power rule, x to the power of m raised to the power of n is x to the power of m times n. I got to multiply those. So 5 to the 1 third over 5 to the 2 fourths, which is 1 half. All right, so now that we have them in exponent form with the same base, we can use our division rule, which says if you have x to the m divided by x to the n, they're both a base x, keep the base, subtract top minus bottom, of course, over 1. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. 
now that the bases match. So base 5 and then top minus bottom, 1 third minus 1 half. Of course, you need to get a common denominator. So you multiply this one by 2 over 2, so 2 sixths minus, you multiply this by 3 over 3, 3 sixths, and you get 5 to the negative 1 sixth. Now we started in radical form, so we do need to go back. Before we can change this to a radical, we need to get rid of the negative exponent. So flip it to the bottom, 1 over 5 to the positive 1 sixth. And now you can actually go back to a radical form. You're going to have 5 inside of a radical, and the bottom number is a 6, it's a sixth root. Now, I picked this problem because it's deceivingly, it looks like it's going to be a really like short problem, but it actually has to have another step because you need to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to rationalize. Let me just rewrite the problem here. 1 over the 6 through to 5. And this is old stuff. So I have 1, 5. I need 6 of them to get rid of the radical. So I'm going to multiply by the 6th root of 5 to the power of 5, or 5 fives. That will give me my 6. And of course, I have to multiply the top by the same thing, the 6th root of 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5. So on the top, you've got the 6th root of all those 5s put together, which actually ends up being 3,125. On the bottom, when these get combined, you will have six fives, one, two, three, four, five, six, one will come out. And there's no radical left. It is completely rationalized. So do read the directions. Um, I've included the odds with your worksheet so that you have a chance to at least check the odds and make sure that you're doing them right. Most of the problems come in pairs. So if you do the odd problem, there's going to be an even problem that's practically the same. All right, thank you for your attention, and I hope things go well for you. That is it.